Hello, Julie here and welcome to my YouTube channel. The other night I was looking on YouTube and I saw this card and I thought I had to give it a try. So um, the measurements that uh, Michelle used in her tutorial were um, metric and I wanted to adjust it so that I could use the inches measurements. So that's what I've done. The video was by Michelle Pepper and I will put a link to her video in the description box below. So I'm starting with three A4 sheets of uh, white cardstock. This is 240 GSM. Uh, you could use slightly heavier card if you wanted to. Now um, uh, the first card I'm going to cut uh, 6 inches by 11 and a half inches. The second piece of cardstock I'm going to cut at 6 inches by 9 and a quarter. And the then I'm going to cut 16 pieces that are 3 inches by 2 and 15 sixteenths, so just slightly less than 3 inch square. So one side 3 inches and one is a sixteenth of an inch less than 3 inches. So I'm going to cut 16 of those. I will have all of these measurements on my blog and I will put a link to my blog post in the description box below also. So if you're wanting the measurements you can just pop over there and check it out. Time now for the scoring. So I'm starting off with the 11 and a half inch piece. I'm going to score at three quarters of an inch, one and a half inches, two and a quarter inches, three inches, three and three quarter inches, four and a half inches, five and a quarter, six, six and three quarters, and seven and a half. So every three quarters of an inch until you get to seven and a half. For the nine and a quarter inch piece, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to score every three quarters of an inch. So three quarters of an inch, one and a half inches, two and a quarter inches, three inches, three and three quarters, four and a half, and five and a quarter. And five and a quarter is the final score line. So we're going to start folding Mountain Valley, Mountain Valley. So starting with the first score line near the large section that's left over, so the large flat area where there's no scoring, that is your mountain fold. And then uh, fold all the way through the rest of the score lines, so mountain valley, mountain valley, so we're making an accordion. Do this for both pieces of cardstock that we've scored. The first one I did, I actually burnished each fold as I made it and um, I found that that didn't work out quite as perfectly as the one where I just folded it and then burnished all of the folds in one hit. So try both ways but I think that you'll be better off if you just fold, 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 fold and then burnish at the end when you've got all of your folds in place. So when you finish between the two pieces of cardstock you should have eight mountains. Time now to join the two pieces together so just uh, the two flat pieces on the ends of your concertina folds apply glue to one and then line the other one up directly on top of it and stick them together try and make sure that you line them up nicely The pattern paper that I'm going to use to decorate this card comes from this DCWV paper pad called Love and Grow. I'm going to add this pattern paper to my 16 squares or 16 pieces of cardstock that are 3 inches by 2 and 15 sixteenths. So I'm going to cut 16 pieces that are 2 and 3 quarter inches square. I'm going to ink around the edge of each of my pattern paper squares and with a black ink pad from Kayser Craft and then I'm going to use my liquid glue to attach each of those 
pattern paper squares to one of my white cardstock squares. I'm trying to centre it as best as possible. The pattern paper I've chosen is directional so I want all of the pattern to go in the same direction so I've gone through and marked um, which is the top of each of my white pieces of cardstock seeing as how they're not exactly square. I want the thinner length to be going from top to bottom so the 2 and 15 16th is from the top to the bottom and the 3 inches is from the left to the right. So I've marked each one of those uh, white cardstock so I know which is the top and then I know that I can put my pattern paper on so that the pattern is going in the same way on all of them. If you chose a non-directional pattern paper you wouldn't have to worry about doing this step. Time now to start attaching our squares to our card base. I'm going to start on the right hand edge so I'm going to be putting the first one on the inside of the first mountain fold. So I'm going to leave the first up piece and the piece that goes down towards the valley is where I'm going to attach my first piece of square cardstock. You can see here I'm doing it on the left hand side of the right on the first fold on the right. Well that's a bit confusing isn't it but you can see here I'm keeping it in normal time so you can see exactly how it goes together. When I put the next one on I try and make sure that I line it up perfectly with the one underneath so that they all fit nicely on top of one another. So we just continue across the top with all eight, no, yes eight, eight squares across the top, one in each valley. So when we reach the last um, fold, we've got eight squares across the top of our card. So when we open the card, we've got those four, uh, sorry, eight um, squares all attached. And when we pull the edges of our card out, we can see those eight flaps laying out flat. This takes a bit of manipulating to start with, but once you get into the knack of it, you can really um, you know, fold those creases so that they work nicely. Okay, it's time to attach the squares to the bottom now. So to do this, we're going to attach them in the same way. We're going to put a bit of glue down the edge of it so that it doesn't go over the fold. And we're going to put it in the opposite direction to the ones above. So where the top ones had, had the square attached to the left hand edge of the fold, the bottom ones are going to be attached to the right hand edge of the fold as you can see here. I used the same technique to attach them. So um, I lined them up on top of each other as I went along to make sure that they sat nicely in the card. So now we've got all of our squares attached to the top and the bottom and when we open our card you can see that the squares go in opposite directions.
I'm going to use this one inch wide satin ribbon to keep my card closed. Um, you could close it, you know, without a tie, but I think a tie looks nice and it certainly helps to keep the card in the right place. So I'm just uh, using some double sided tape to attach that ribbon to the front of the card before I put my decorative paper on top. I'm only attaching it at the top, on the top of the card, not around the back or the sides because if I do that would impede the opening of the card. So make sure you only put your tape and uh, attach your ribbon to the front of your card. My card front is 6x4 so I'm going to cut a piece of this decorative paper that is 5 and 3 quarters by 3 and 3 quarters. I'm going to cut three of them. One for the front of the card, one for the inside front and one for the inside back. You could cut a fourth one if you wanted to and put it on the back of the card but I didn't think that was necessary. I ink around the edge of each of these panels and use double sided tape to attach them to my card. So this is what we have so far. We've got our front cover, we've got inside cover done, we've got our ribbon in place for the closure and our card opens out. The back ribbon is not attached anywhere except for the front. So here we have it with the bow, looks very cute. Untie the bow open the card and you get your flaps that spring out to put your greeting on. To decorate my card I'm going to use this Woodware Mini Scented Balloon Stamp. I've stamped it onto some white cardstock and uh, we used black ink to do that, uh, stays on jet black ink. I've also used Uniquely Creative's Little Leaves die to cut some leaves out of white cardstock. Now I'm going to attach these to the front of my card. Of course I've fussy cut them. I don't have the die that goes with this stamp. I don't even know if there is one but I'll put a link to the stamp and the die for the leaves in the description box if you're interested in having a look at those. I'm just um, using glue to attach these. I don't want too much dimension on the front of this card because it would interfere with my ribbon closure. Just as a little extra touch, I'm using a finger dobber to add some carved pumpkin distress ink to the centres of the flowers. To create the greeting inside of the card, I'm going to use my Kaiser Craft um, DD700 alphabet uppercase and I'm going to cut the letters from black cardstock I've chosen to put in there, it's your birthday, but you can put any greeting in there. You could put um, happy birthday, you could put um, whatever you like really. But anyway, I've chosen to go for it's your birthday. Um, I am going to use my tweezers and my liquid glue to attach these to the bottom right hand section of each one of those flaps along the top. There are eight flaps along each um, level, so the eight along the bottom are big enough to have birthday. So, yeah, you can spread them out however suits you. So there we have our finished card. If you wanted to, you could um, add a piece of white cardstock to the inside back of your card so that you could write your personal message on there because this paper is a bit uh, glossy. I will do that I think when I'm ready to hand this card out to somebody. Well thank you for joining me here today. I really love this card and I hope you'll have a try at making it. It is very 
interesting and a more enjoyable process really. So thank you for being here. If you're not already a subscriber, I'd love it if you would subscribe and I hope you can join me for my next video.